Philip Cairns was 13 years old when he disappeared without a trace on the 23rd of October 1986. Philip had just finished his lunch at his home in Rathfarnham, County Dublin. He was on his lunch break from school. He called out to his grand May as he was leaving till an hour he was off. This was the last time anyone would ever hear from him. His school, Kalistia Anya, was only a ten minute walk away, but he never made it back that afternoon. Philip was a well behaved and thoughtful teenager, and when he didn't come home at his usual time, his family were immediately worried. They checked with his friends in school and found out he had never returned after lunch. He was reported missing that evening at 6.30 p.m. His family, friends, neighbours and the local Garda immediately began searching on that cold and wet evening in October. His parents, Philip Sr. and Alice, were adamant he never would have run away and felt something more sinister had happened to him. His father said he wouldn't have got into a car with a stranger, so it had to be someone he knew or was familiar with. But how could a boy just disappear without a trace? And to this day, nothing has ever been recovered apart from his school bag, which was left in the alley close to his home six days after he vanished. There has been much speculation and theories on what happened to the teenager over the decades. In 2016, the detectives had one person of interest they were investigating, Eamon Cook, a radio DJ and a convicted paedophile who was serving a prison sentence for child abuse. He was also dying from lung cancer in a hospice when detectives went to talk to him. A victim of Cook's had come forward and claimed to have seen him hit Philip over the head at his Radio Dublin premises. Former detective Tom Doyle stated that they felt he was going to confess when he was questioned. They were going to continue investigating Cook but learned he had passed away. Cook was the owner of a pirate radio station called Radio Dublin. He had many criminal convictions dating back to 1952, but his first sex offence charges were in 2003, and he was found guilty. His conviction was squashed due to a technicality, and he was released in 2006. He was put on trial again in 2007, facing 42 charges of which date it back from the mid to the late 70s. He pled not guilty. He was found guilty and sentenced to 10 years in prison. He later applied for parole in 2015, which was denied. Along with cancer, he also had dementia, when he confirmed some of the allegations made to him regarding Philip's disappearance. His DNA was also later tested from Philip's school bag, which was found in the alley, but there was no match. Philip's remains still haven't been recovered, and the case still remains open to this day.